How do you get job invites on Upwork? I've been on Upwork for a few years now, and within a couple of months of implementing a few things, I was receiving several invites per day, and still do. And I'm gonna share with you what I know about how the invite algorithm works. I'm gonna walk you through the system that I use showing you my own profile. And I've earned over $300,000 on Upwork, and much of that came from clients that invited me to their job, not from jobs that I had to seek out and apply to. So there's a few things you need to do to start getting invites, and there's a few things you need to do to keep getting invites, and we're gonna talk about both. So to start getting invites, step one, you need to optimize your profile. I'm gonna show you mine so that we can get a sense of what that means to optimize your profile for getting job invites. So you need to make sure, first of all, that it's very obvious what your area of expertise is. Don't try to be a jack of all trades, niche down to a specific area of expertise, and you'll have a much easier time getting job invites because it really all comes down to relevancy when it comes to clients inviting you to a job. So you can see here that I am a YouTube specialist comma video content marketing. So I specifically placed those keywords in there because video content marketing yeah, describes the type of services that I am giving and it matches what clients are searching and it's very specific. So I don't just help companies with marketing, I focus on video marketing and more specifically video content marketing with an emphasis on YouTube. Um, so me deciding to focus on that specific expertise is what launched my Upwork freelancing career. It really did. It took me from not earning much money on Upwork to being able to triple my income within a couple of months. And clients, they, they then saw me as an expert in one thing, and it reduced the competition of other freelancers because most of them were targeting too broadly. Most of them were uh, just uh, targeting their, their job title was marketing specialist or digital marketing expert and it was very very general and so I had an easier time competing for specific jobs having to do with YouTube and video content marketing because that was my job title step two apply to jobs before you get invited to jobs you do need to apply to jobs and get jobs and then do a good job so the client leaves you a rating and review, which will help Upwork to then want to surface your profile to potential clients when they're posting a job. So go after quick projects that you can complete in under a week so that you can start building up some testimonials on your profile. And yes, the longer term clients will come later. And if you happen to come across some jobs that are long term jobs and you're actually getting an interview, like don't don't reject a long-term job opportunity for sure but it's important that you get a few jobs out of the way that are quick turnaround jobs that can help build up your work history and your profile because that's going to boost your job success score which in turn will improve the likelihood of Upwork recommending your profile to clients. So you don't need a 100% job success score to start getting invites. I was getting invites after 80%, and especially if you're having a rising talent badge because you're doing well on a few short projects to start, that's gonna help you get invites even with a lower score because they know that you're just newer and that's why your score is lower, not because you've done a poor job. So here's what it looks like when a client posts a job on Upwork. I want to show you the back end of a my client profile because I also hire freelancers on Upwork. I don't just work as a freelancer. And so I can show you what it looks like when a client is posting a job and what it looks like when they're inviting freelancers and how Upwork surfaces profiles. So as you can see, uh, right here, there's an invite freelancers. So you view a job, so you post a job and then it takes you to this next step, invite freelancers to your job. And now Upwork is surfacing all these profiles and uh, it shows your rate, your job title, your first name, and then it says how many relevant skills you have to your job. So this one says has 11 relevant skills to your job. That's why it's very important that you optimize your profile with specific skills as well and that you're, you're putting yourself in the right categories because those relevant skills are right here at the top and it, and it determines uh, whether Upwork surfaces your profile or not. And then it says how much the person has earned um, 
and also it shows whether what percentage they're in as far as performance in that category so this person is in the top one percent of writing so she's the top one percent of writers on upwork based on her job success score based on her her uh, ratings and reviews and the work that she's been able to do so if i were to click on the profile then it shows me the job success score and it shows me everything else that's normally on the profile and I can look at work history and so forth. And so that's what a client's going to do. And they're going to sit here and scroll through your profile. And then if they want to invite you, they'll click invite and then go back. And so they're going to scroll through here. And one tip about this and something that's important to recognize is um, that some of these profiles that are getting surfaced are freelancers that are newer to Upwork. Like this person has only earned $480 on education projects. Okay, let's go to this guy. 30 an hour, $7,000 total earning. And so you're going to see a variety here of new freelancers and older freelancers. Most clients are not going to scroll through all the pages here. They're going to maybe go through the first and second page, sometimes the third page. And so if you're not showing up in those first couple of pages, you're unlikely to be seen because as, as a client posting a job, they don't want to spend a ton of time trying to search for freelancers. They're hoping that Upwork will just send the right people to them. So that's why it is important to uh, still seek out jobs, but just know that you do want to be ranking right near the top in order to be invited. And I've actually, I've actually done some tests before where I've posted jobs relevant to what I do and I've seen my own profile pop up and I've noticed um, that sometimes Upwork gets the category wrong, especially when you're doing something that's more unusual. So if you're a writer or a web developer, it's very, very streamlined um, type of work that fits into very clear categories. And so Upwork knows how to surface your profile to the right categories really easily. But like what I do with being a YouTube specialist and video content marketing, it's a more unusually focused category. So Upwork sometimes will surface my profile for just video production or video editing, which I don't do anymore. I used to a long time ago. So this profile, 90% job success. Okay. So that's not a hundred. The very second person that Upwork recommended here on the first page only has a 90% job success score. Okay. This guy, 98%. Okay. We're just going to do a test here to see 88%, so that's not even 90%, and he's like number four. It goes to show that Upwork will promote freelancers that don't have a super high job success score. It has to be high enough. I'm gonna guess it needs to probably be over 80 at least, um, but you can get over 80 pretty quickly. 85%, that's the lowest I've seen so far. Um, but if you look at these people's profiles, okay, now hers is 80%, hers is right on the dot of 80%. But, you know, if we go through here, okay, there's some poor reviews. Look at that. Three, 2.6. So 2.75. So she doesn't, you know, she's got some good reviews and some poor reviews, but she's still on the first page. And uh, my guess with things like this has to do with the fact that the relevancy of the job title um, she's earned over $20,000 on the platform. So there's some other things that are almost making up for some of the poor reviews that she's put in 300 hours, 177 jobs. So if she keeps getting jobs, there must be enough good reviews for Upwork to still want to recommend her profile, even though there's some poor reviews recently, um, or maybe there was better reviews in the past. Um, so it's important to realize that just because you're new doesn't mean that you're not going to be, your profile is not going to be surfaced and you're not going to be recommended to jobs. Uh, Upwork will still recommend you if you have a few good things going for you. And so it's not just for, they're trying to do a mix of recommending new freelancers and recommending experienced ones. And it also depends on what you're looking for. In your job post, uh, as a client, you choose whether you're looking for an expert or entry level or intermediate. And so that's also gonna affect which profiles they surface. If you're looking for an expert, they're more unlikely to surface really low rate newer freelancers. If you're looking for entry level, they're more likely to surface those profiles. So that also 
has an effect. So in my experience with hiring freelancers, relevancy really is one of the most important things. If I'm posting a job looking for a YouTube writer and somebody's job title says YouTube writer, oh, you better believe they're gonna be my top choice because the relevancy is so spot on. A quick tip for you as a freelancer is that when you're deciding on your job title, um, research what jobs are being posted in your category and industry and see what wording your ideal clients are using in their job posts and then adjust your job title accordingly to match the wording that you keep seeing in, in multiple job posts relevant to what you do. And then that's gonna increase your relevancy and increase the chances and you getting invited. So that's it for preliminary steps of what to do to start getting invites. Now, once you start getting them, it's not gonna be automatic that you keep getting them. So what do you have to do to keep getting invites? Let's go back to my profile and use this as a, as a model here for how to keep getting invites. So as you can see in my profile, I've earned over $300,000 on Upwork. Um, Upwork's not the only place where I get clients, but it is one of the bigger places where I get clients as a source of revenue for my business. 146 jobs total, 3,300 hours. Um, all of these are working towards uh, me getting more invites, especially by um, uh, those looking for an expert. So I don't get as many invites by uh by companies that are looking for entry level. So just know that even if you're entry level, you're more likely to get invites by entry level clients looking for entry level freelancers. And then if you're intermediate and then expert and so forth, uh, you're likely to get more invites of from clients who are looking for that specific tier. Now, even though I have you know over three hundred thousand dollars earned, thirty three hundred hours, I have a hundred percent job success score. I have basically five across the board as far as ratings i have good reviews all the way down my profile um if i drop off the map and i stop applying to jobs and i abandon upwork for a few months they're going to stop surfacing my profile um, they're going to stop recommending my profile to potential clients and I, I will stop getting invites. Even though I have the credibility built up on my profile and I have all this experience and I have a lot of good things working for me, they're not gonna keep surfacing my profile because they're like, oh, he's inactive. He hasn't been active on Upwork for a time. Um, he's not responding to invites. Why should I keep recommending his profile to people if he's not responding to invites? So, I want to talk about ratings and reviews real quick. As you can see, there are a lot of jobs that I've completed that don't have a rating or review at all. There's no feedback given. And this is very common. And it's not because the client was unsatisfied. Almost all of these were experiences where the client was satisfied and they were really excited for the work that I did for them. But they didn't leave feedback um, because a lot of... A lot of companies on Upwork, they, they don't know how to leave feedback for one. Two, they don't have the time and they're not even thinking about it. They're trying to move on to the next thing and they're not even thinking about the whole rating and review system once the contract ends. So you do need to ask for it to remind them before you stop the conversation with them. Make sure to ask them, hey, can you help me out by leaving a rating and review? And I'll be sure to leave a good one for you as well on your client profile. Uh, because this can help you get me get more jobs just like this. And um, I haven't been consistent enough at asking for ratings and reviews. So part of it is my fault. Um, when I have asked, I've almost always gotten one. And then it was a positive one. But when, then when I haven't asked, it, I, I, didn't re I didn't remind them. And so they just didn't think to even do it. Now, Upwork has changed something recently. They used to ding your job success score whenever you would have no feedback given. It would have actually hurt your job success score when a client would not leave any feedback because they thought that that automatically meant that the client had a negative experience, but it wasn't so bad that they wanted to trash your profile and leave you a negative review. Um, but then they realized, thankfully, finally, that many clients, they don't leave feedback simply because they forgot or they don't know how, not because they had a negative experience. So Upwork changed it and no longer, I think only in the last year they changed it and no longer will 
Upwork hurt your job success score if a client does not leave any feedback. Now, if they leave negative feedback and a negative review, that will hurt your job success score and hurt your chances in getting invites. So yeah, if we go through this first page of recent jobs I've completed, only four of them, four out of the 10 jobs have a rating and review. <laughs> Six of them don't, but it's not hurting my job success score anymore. So what does contribute to me continuing to get invites? Because I've had times where I'm getting a lot of invites and times where it drops down to almost nothing and several days go by without any invites. Um, and I started to study what was causing that because I didn't completely abandon Upwork and I also um, was still doing a good job with the clients that I did have on Upwork, but I was just really busy. So I wasn't, there's been times where I wouldn't respond to invites for several days um, or I would reject a lot of invites because I was too busy to accept an interview. And Upwork started to see that as, oh, um, if he keeps rejecting invites, I'm not gonna keep recommending his profile because then that's a bad experience for the client to keep inviting me, but then I keep rejecting. Um, so Upwork's not going to waste their time recommending my profile when obviously I'm, I'm not wanting to get invited, right? I keep rejecting them or I'm ignoring them, which means I don't want to get invited and Upwork gets the hint and then stops recommending my profile. But then I've noticed that once I get in there and I start, so, so to trip the system back into inviting me again, what I've done, what I've had to do whenever that's happened is one, the invites that I do get. Um, and it might only be one or two a week instead of several per day, I go in there and I make sure to respond to the invites within a day of getting them. And I make sure that as long as it's relevant enough to my expertise, I will respond, I will accept it. And that starts to get the system going again for recommending my profile. But what I've also had to do is I've had to go out and look for jobs again. So um, when the invites start to fade away and I'm not getting nearly as many, I have to go out and find jobs that are posted and apply to them and use some of my connects to apply to those jobs. And that also trips the system into thinking, oh, he's looking for work again. Okay, he's submitting proposals. Let's start recommending his profile again to clients that are posting jobs. Okay, so that's, that's how you can uh, trip the system into actively promoting your profile again if you have fallen away from it because you haven't been responding to invites for a time. Now, I know Upwork has an availability feature where you can say I'm not available for any new work and then they definitely will not recommend your profile and you definitely won't get invites. Um, but I usually just keep mine to less than 30 hours per week, which I, I hate that it's be greater than 30 or less than 30. It's like, it's the stupidest thing ever because most freelancers are putting either less than 10 or more than 10 or less than five or more than five, not less than 30. It's, it's ridiculous. I wish they had a different, uh, uh, you're a freelancer, you're not an employee. I wish they had a better uh, system there for availability. But I've always just kept it at less than 30, even though, Usually my, my availability is only a few extra hours a week. Now it's better that you respond to invites and reject them than just ignore them or that's gonna hurt your job success score. So I wanted to show you what it looks like. So if you go into find work and my stats, it's gonna show you a breakdown of your job success score, okay? So 12 month earnings, 165,769. That's gonna affect um, your job success score. So, uh, your 12 months month earnings must be at least a thousand dollars to qualify for top rated okay so it's actually a pretty low uh standard for top rated but um yeah they have a minimum there before you can even be top rated and yes that affects it too if you're top rated or top rated plus that's going to affect whether you're being rec recommended to expert jobs so because of that badge i get recommended more often to clients who are looking for experts and that's the type of job that they have um, clients who would recommend you 86 percent again this has to do with um, um, it's not 100 percent not because of a lot of negative reviews it's not 100 percent because some clients didn't leave any feedback right so that does affect that but it's high enough for me to still have a 100 percent job success score and and so forth long-term clients 68 percent so this also affects it so yes 
at some point you want to start accepting long-term client projects all i'm saying is just accept a few short ones at the at the very beginning so you can get some ratings and reviews on your profile and then definitely go after the long-term ones because the higher this percentage is the closer you're going to get to 100 percent job success score because of course upwork's going to reward you for long-term clients because that means more money for them on a recurring basis um, you don't want any account holds so make sure you're following all the rules and then top rated eligible weeks again 16 you got to be eligible for 16 weeks straight um, so this is affecting it now these other areas here are also affecting whether i get job invites or not whether i keep getting them or not so communication you've replied to 63 out of 65 invitations in the past 90 days so I wasn't perfect at re replying to all of them, but I tried to always, rep so replying just means that you either accepted it and you messaged the client or you rejected it. Both of those count as a reply. Um, responsiveness, less than 24 hour response time. I haven't always responded in less than 24 hours. I've had invites where it was several days before I responded, but on average it's less than 24 hours and that's what's important. Um, you reply within a day. Okay, now <laughs> I'm right in the middle, see, because I've because I've gotten really busy. Um, sometimes it is a couple of days before I reply. And so rather than being all the way up here, I'm right in the middle, but it's still good enough because I reply every time and I'm almost at the very top here. That makes up for me being in the middle here. And so I'm still getting invites. Now, I bet if I reply within a day to every invite I get over the next couple of weeks, this bar is going to go up and it might actually help me get more invites but i'm in a position where i'm not looking for a ton extra work just continually some extra and then it has and then it judges your marketing effectiveness so how many jobs you've applied to you were, how often you were viewed how often you were interviewed out of people viewing your profile and then how often you were hired and as you can see i'm all the way up at the top for hired, that means my conversion rate is really high. It's not 100%. That doesn't mean it's 100%, but it's like 60 to 70% of the interviews I have turn into a new client. And then when Upwork sees that high conversion rate, they're like, ooh, I'm going to recommend his profile, especially to the expert category, because he has a really high conversion rate, which means people clearly like him when they're interviewing him and they're very likely to hire him. And so of course Upwork's gonna recommend my profile because if they hire me, that means more money for Upwork, right? Because they always take a percentage. And then it shows you how many people have viewed your profile uh, each week. So make sure that you keep tabs on these stats. These are very helpful in you determining whether you're hitting the mark that you need to be hitting to keep getting invites and to start getting invites. Now, if you're getting too busy and you keep rejecting all your invites, um, that's a sign that you need to start hiring some people to help you out. Don't be afraid to hire an assistant to take on some of the administrative tasks to operate your business so that you can keep taking on more clients. So my goal as a freelancer is to never say no to an ideal client. So as I keep looking for jobs and as I have invites come in, if I am hitting the max amount of hours that I wanna work per week, but I have more work that I can handle, then I keep hiring more people to help me out. I keep building up my team and that's why I'm, I'm operating as more of an agency now. Now you may never wanna operate as an agency and that's okay and you might wanna just solopreneur it the rest of your life, um, but know that your, your income will be limited and it will hit a ceiling um, and also you will max out your time. If you're maxing out on hours, if you're rejecting a lot of invites, if you're ignoring them, that's a sign that you need some people to help you out so that you can keep saying yes to the ideal clients that are coming to you. So in summary, start applying to jobs to start getting invites, get some quick jobs out of the way, get some good ratings and reviews, and then go after some long-term clients and keep tabs on what's on your stats page and just know that it will take a few months and that's okay. And if you're committed and you're doing a really great job for your clients and you're very communicative, once you're in a contract with them, make sure you're in regular communication with them. Um, do not just work in a bubble. Uh, make sure they're very clear on what the client wants and do a really good job. And you'll start getting more and more invites. You know, get to the point where, like me, you're getting several invites per day. And again, because of the nature of what I do, 
at least half of the invites I get are irrelevant to what I do because Upwork is still a little confused on my categories. Um, but it's still worth it for me to have focused in as much as I have because it's allowed me to get jobs that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise because the competition is much lower. And I'm being seen by clients as a true expert in my field because I'm focusing on a very specific thing. So that's how you get invites and that's how you keep getting invites. And when you're invited, you don't have to use up connects. So it's a really good thing to seek after. Now, quick bonus tip, make a stellar video and put that on your profile that where you're teaching something relevant to what it is you do and you're talking about your services, that's gonna stand out and really impress potential clients. So if we go to my profile, I have a video here, grow your business with video. And you click on it, it's just uploaded on my YouTube channel and it's a three minute video where I talk about what I do. I talk about what video content marketing is and, I, and so I kind of educate the client a little bit on on the benefits of video content marketing and i provide some value for them in the video itself but i also introduce my services how do we help you and i have a list of services here um, and i'm it's very much a, a educational video but also a bit of a sales video and and how i can benefit their business very few freelancers take the time to create a video with them on camera talking about their services. If you do that, you will stand out. It will help you get more invites and have a higher conversion rate and turn those invites into new clients. If this was helpful to you, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you can get more videos like this and help to build up your freelance business. I'll see you next time.